Hey, welcome to this video. My name is Emilio and today we're going to look at how to register a domain name. There's a whole bunch of reasons why you may want to get yourself a domain name, a www.yourname.com or .org or .net, whatever it may be. We're going to look at how to do that today in this video. But before we do that, please remember as always to subscribe to my channel, Digital Bike Computing, clicking on the notification bell to be kept up to date with all of my videos. Let's go through that right now. So having a domain name is awesome. Um, I have several uh, and I've had several for many, many years. Some because I just want to have them, because I want to own them. Uh, perhaps in future somebody famous comes around and they want to buy that domain name off you for a lot of money. Uh, you could be buying a domain name to set up your own website, which is one of the most common reasons. Whatever the reason why you want to do this, we're going to be covering that today in this video. Now specifically, I'm going to be using a uh, company called Namecheap to go and register my domain. That, that's the company that I use quite a lot to go and register domains and that's one that I recommend. In my description, I've got a link there directly into that website to actually go and register that domain name. They're awesome and as the name suggests, they are cheap, hence the name, name cheap. So of course, when we're talking about domain names, we're talking about something on the internet, right? You go to your web browser, you open up your phone, your computer, you're navigating to your web browser and you're going into Google and typing in, you're typing in Apple computers and you're gonna get a website called www.apple.com. Apple.com is the domain name. That is the domain that is owned by Apple. Or I've got Digital Byte Computing. So I own digitalbytecomputing.com. But what's great is that once you own that little piece, your, your name dot whatever, let's say dot com, all the prefix stuff before that, you can also register and set up under your domain name. So you could have www.digitalbytecomputing.com. You could have mail.digitalbytecomputing.com and mail could be pointing, say, to a web server. You could have portal.digitalbytecomputing. You could have web.digitalbytecomputing.com. Whatever that prefix is beforehand can actually be set up when you're registering your domain. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be crossing over to a computer. We're going to be logging into the Namecheap uh, website and then registering that uh, domain name. And then once you're in the portal, we're gonna go through a few of the basic uh, items that I would sort of recommend around you setting up and how you would set it up uh, and go from there. Now, I will mention that Namecheap is not the only one. It's one of hundreds of different domain name registers on the internet, essentially companies that are responsible for registering domain names. That's sort of part of their business model. They are responsible for for perhaps domain name registrations, for web hosting, for selling VPN and all these other sorts of services. But in this video, we're focusing just on the domain name. Now, I will mention that, of course, a domain, uh, getting a domain name is just registering the domain. It's not a website, right? If you want to go and build a website, whatever that website may be for whatever purpose, you obviously need to store that website somewhere and then have a domain name that points to that website, right? Because a website that's on the internet has uh, essentially an address to, to find that website, which is generally an IP address, right? You've probably seen an IP address. You may be common with 192.168.0.100, for example, is an IP address um, range. That is a common IP that's used in a lot of places. But a website will have a specific, unique, IP address. And of course, the great thing about a domain name is that you don't have to remember the IP address. Imagine how annoying would it be to have to go and remember all these IP addresses. Instead of visiting www.apple.com, you have to type in whatever, 123.68.4, whatever their you know IP address is. That would be absolutely frustrating. So smart people back in the day decided, why don't we look at translating that into a more readable human form, uh, hence a domain name. And then of course in the background, it's actually going and translating that domain name into the IP address. So you are still hitting the IP address eventually. 
So we're gonna register that IP address. And then of course, you wanna set up a website in future, you then need to point it to the website, but we'll leave the website creation for a future video. Big introduction, I know. Let's now cross over to my computer and we're gonna go through the steps on how to set up your domain name. All right, here we are logged into our computer. Uh, I'm doing this from a Mac, but the process on Windows is exactly the same. Now, um, my selected uh, vendor, again, essentially the, the company that I like to use um, is called uh, Namecheap. Um, they're excellent, uh, they're cheap, hence the name. Uh, and this is where I store all my domains. So all my domains that I have created, websites that I've created, WordPress, registering SSL certificates, all of this sort of stuff, I do it all through Namecheap. So um, I just did a simple Google search, Namecheap, the web address is www.namecheap.com. We're gonna go into this. Now, as I said, um, this, this doesn't have to be the URL provider that you use to buy your own domain, but it's one that I recommend, and I've got the links in the description um, to sort of give you a direct path into Namecheap uh, so that you can register it through there. So here we are right here. Now, the first thing that I like to always do is um, put in your domain in here first. All right, so you wanna make sure that the domain, of course, is available. These guys sell .coms, they sell .nets, and a range of other domains as well. So the first thing that we'll do is we're gonna put the domain that I want to use. Now, I've already got a domain registered, which is digitalbytecomputing.com. All right, and I'm gonna click on this little search button right here. And right away, this will tell me whether the domain is available for purchase or not. Um, so this is really helpful. And you'll see it's come back with a few results telling me that digitalbytecomputing.com is currently unavailable. It's already been registered. I registered this in 2014. It's given me some suggestions here around other ones that I could potentially look at buying. All right, so other digitalbytecomputing dot something else. And you'll see that all of these are available. Uh, it's given me some, you know, a common one would be say a .net, which is pretty common. Uh, so you can go, you know, essentially see right here, all of your other domains are available and then how much it will cost you uh, per year versus say a standard retail cost. You can see that they're extremely cheap when it comes to registering some domains. So for example, a .net will cost you $14.62 uh, per year. So what we're gonna do is let's just go back and let's search for Digital Byte Computing 2 which I don't think will exist. Uh, and there we go, it is available. Now I'm not gonna register this right now, but you can see that right from here, digitalbytecomputing2.com is available and I can just add that to the cart and that will then add that and then I will become the owner of that domain. So really the step will be selecting add to cart. See so that it says it's now been added to my cart. It's right here at the top, which I can go and see view cart. And through this entire process is where you'll actually go and uh, essentially set up an account as well. Uh, they also have a great service where you can chat to a live person. But anyway, uh, here we go, uh, digitalbytecomputing2.com. So you can register that for one year if you only wanna use it for one year. Essentially what that'll happen is, you know, when you're nearing the one year subscription, you'll get you know messages, emails sent to you telling you your domain is about to expire. And if you don't go and renew it, then that domain will become available for somebody else to grab and purchase. So you wanna make sure that you keep it. So if you have long-term plans to keep this domain, I would go with something like a five year, for example. Uh, and in the case of this one, a five year is gonna cost me $60.37. This is of course in Australian dollars, yours will be in the US dollars or in pounds if you're in the UK, depending on where you are. Um, so that is registering that for five years. There's some other options as well here if you so choose to. By default, which is excellent, these guys give you a who is guard. So if you don't know what who is is, uh, if you go to that website, whois.com, you go into Google, uh, you'll find a whole bunch of information there around domains. So you put in a domain in there and it'll give you a public uh, information essentially about who registered the domain, when it was last registered, when it's expiring, the country, all of that sort of stuff. So you'll see that by this little, um, you know, question mark, it says that uh, it's gonna hide your personal info in the public, who is database, keeps your data safe and helps to avoid spam now free forever. So that's a nice benefit to have and you get that with a one year subscription. Uh, then you can also do a premium DNS. Uh, if you so choose to, you can click on, on enable, that will do $6.64 and that will give you, essentially ensures that uh, your DNS is up. 
So essentially what's registering out on the internet gives you DDoS protection, essentially um, securing you from being trying to bring your domain or your website down. So that's a, another feature if you so choose to have that. Now, the other good thing is that these two, along with the actual domain registration, you can click on auto renew so that at the end of your five years or end of one year, it doesn't ask you, hey, you need to renew, make sure you go and do this. You can actually automatically say auto renew. And then if you've put, you know, if you've purchased this with a credit card, you will then just go and re, uh, re reset up that account again. Uh, there's other stuff that you can do in here around web hosting, SSL VPN, email and WordPress uh, hosting. So we're not gonna cover exactly these in this video. There will be a future video covering one of these, but essentially web hosting um, is storing of a website because all we're doing here is just buying the domain. You're buying the ownership of your www.domain.com or .net or .org or whatever it may be. You're buying just that. You're not buying a website. You're not buying website storage. You're not buying SSL. You're not buying VPN. They're all additional services. So if you're wanting to go and build a website with that domain, you have to do two things. You have to get the domain and you also then have to have the space to build that website. Okay, so a good service for that would be, for example, the web hosting service or even a WordPress hosting if you're, if you're wanting to build and host a website using WordPress. WordPress is brilliant and I will do a future video uh, on Namecheap, how to register WordPress and how to build your own website because WordPress is excellent and I've used it for years. I use it in businesses and it is brilliant for building and managing websites very, very easily. So. Uh, that is additional options there. So that includes you know, professional email, VPN, if you so choose those services. And, and the great thing is you can buy some of these right now uh, for an additional little amount. And that essentially will get added into your account underneath the setup account that we're gonna create right here. If you're happy with that, we can now say confirm order. You can log in if you already have a account with Namecheap or you can go and create a brand new one. Okay, so you have your information, your relevant information added into there. And if you're all happy with all of that, you'll see on the far right, it gives you a little bit of an overview of what's gonna happen. Here's your domain, subtotal being 6160, clicking on continue. Now there's a bit more information that uh, the ICANN requires, the Huey's database store owner contact information for all domains registered. So you need to input some information to be able to register against this uh, database, this online database. And then of course your payment information uh, and then order and then done and then select continue. And then that domain will become registered to you. Here's a domain that I've already got, I've already registered, it's all good to go. I've got the domain itself and then I've also got hosting, okay? So here is the domain, digitalbyte.digital. You can see a whole bunch of information here around the products that I have, which is this one right here, and then the actual hosting pack, which is the Stellar Plus. Uh, of course, hosting is something that I would definitely recommend because the hosting component will actually let you host the website. So not only do you have your domain name itself, but then you can actually have a website that you can obviously look at getting built. You can host it right into the Namecheap service, and then you just tie the two things together. Here's something else that I could do quite easily. So I can do a, like a redirect. Um, so if somebody now visits mail.digitalbyte.digital, it will redirect it to my www.digitalbytecomputing.com URL that I've got. So you can do a lot of these redirects quite easily right from within here. So if I do a little drop down here, you can see exactly what I've got. So I've got my digitalbyte.digital domain name with who is guard on, and there is my Stellar Plus hosting package on top of that. But that's the basic steps on how to create a domain. Very, very easy to do. Uh, we will look at a future video on how to actually go and create the website and get it working on here because all we've done is you've just got now a domain that you now own, but it doesn't really do anything. You now need to point it to a website or some sort of service out on the web. Check my description for a direct link into that Namecheap service. You get a great deal to get yourself your very first or maybe your 10th domain uh, that can be registered for you and for you to use. That's it. Thank you so much for spending the time. Do what you need to do, like, comment, subscribe, clicking on that button and on the bell to be kept up to date with all of my videos. Thank you so much for spending the time. Really, really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.